Hey everyone, subscribe to the channel and comment down below saying I subscribe to enter this month's shout out giveaway where we shout out one lucky person every month who subscribes and comments saying I subscribed. Now let's get on with the video. So I've decided to look back into my past and search up a YouTuber that I used to watch a while ago and what I found was really interesting and I just want to share my thoughts on it. So this video is going to be me sharing my thoughts on Megan Plays. Now if you don't know who Megan Plays is, I'll give a short history of her. Currently Megan Plays is a Roblox YouTuber, her channel is called Megan Plays Roblox, but I mostly just call her by Megan Plays as she has kind of multiple Megan Plays channels. When she first started YouTube, she did Sims 4 content, I believe. I think she did a mix of Minecraft and Sims 4 content, but I believe she was prominently Sims 4. She was gaining popularity within the Sims 4 community, but soon decided that she wanted to, you know, quit the game in order to pursue something else. Because she just wasn't having fun with the game anymore. She mostly just built and made sims and that was it she really wasn't enjoying the gameplay or the aspect of anything now megan is doing very well and she is really booming within the roblox community she has successfully reached over 1 million subscribers now let's get on to my thoughts about megan plays number one super perky Megan has always had this super fun, super perky, super bubbly energy to her and her videos and I've always found it very, very refreshing and I really, really like how she interacts with, you know, like the camera, how she, you know, interacts with the viewers. I really like how, you know, she does all of that. Like even back in her Sims 4 days and her Minecraft days, she would always have this very, very, you know, happy, bubbly, like smile on her face. She would always be super excited about whatever she was doing, which also might have played a hand in her quitting Sims because she would have to pretend to be really excited about something Something that she really really didn't care about as much anymore number two really loves the color pink and I mean she really likes the color pink most of her channel is pink it's all pink like she's got pink hair which now is you know fading a little bit but she's got pink hair <laughs> Um, she's got like, you know, pink avatar in Roblox. She's got, you know, pink theme throughout all of her thumbnails. She just really likes the color pink and not just like a really subtle, like light pink or bright pink. It's like deep hot pink, <laughs> which I don't know how I personally feel about that. I think it's very aesthetically pleasing to some people but I'm just not a pink type of person like it could be a really nice accent color mixed in with you know like maybe like a purple or like a blue or something along those lines you know pink and green are really good together but I'm just not a pink person to where I want everything pink <laughs> so that's probably just a me thing but it seems that she is really enthusiastic about the color pink Maybe just because she's a girl, but that's a stereotype, so I don't know. Number three, definitely blew up when starting to make Roblox videos. So when she was making some sort videos, she had a steady like flow of views. Sometimes they were really up there, sometimes they were really down there, and then most of the time she had a steady flow of views that were maybe around like to the 1000 mark to the 10,000 mark and that was in she always landed in between there you know sometimes she would land at 10,000 sometimes she would get like maybe 500 views a video but you know it, it landed within that spectrum normally between 1000 and 10,000 as you know I watched her channel back then when she decided to stop doing you know sims and went on to you know roblox you could tell that her channel grew so much just from uploading a Roblox video. It might have taken, you know, her viewers a little bit of time to get used to the Roblox content. Maybe some of them were for it, maybe some of them were against it, but it definitely worked out in the long run as she has, you know, really found her place as a creator and in a community that she really does enjoy. So that's really, really great. 
Number four, she has the same kind of shocked face in many thumbnails, and it's the same type of shocked face. And she's not even like reusing, like, you know, a, a picture, which she does sometimes do. She sometimes reuses pictures of herself in other thumbnails, which is fine. Do that all you want, but it's the same type of shocked face. And every thumbnail that has to do with something shocking, she just makes the same face and then it's good, you know what I mean? And I just find it really repetitive within my opinion, obviously. It gets the clicks, it gets the views. She still makes decent money off of her channel. So obviously she's doing something right. But I don't know, it's just a little like, it's the same face every time. But other than that, it's really like, I don't know, the thumbnails are nice looking. Number five, very creative. And what I mean by like, she's very creative is, you know, she's able to think of multiple different things about Roblox and she's able to just do that and keep it going. And she does this like daily, she uploads daily, I'm pretty sure. And it's kind of just crazy. You know, how many, how much can you really do with Roblox? If you were to really test your limits and figure out how much you could really do with that game. I know there are a bunch of other like games to check out in Roblox, but like what more can you really do other than just playing the game? You know what I mean? And she has kind of done role play content within her, you know, Roblox videos. You know, she pretends to talk to a legendary magical unicorn named Honey. Uh, you know, she goes on crazy adventures with Honey. She does all the stuff. Like, she gets cheated on by ex-boyfriends. You know, she's very creative and she can obviously make up a storyline. And it's probably a lot easier than making something that's more machinima. So I understand why she does this. I just think it's creative of her. She could obviously think of things off the top of her head since most of her videos, I can see them as a role play or an improv format. Number six, focusing on a super cute content. So basically what I mean by this is Megan mostly focuses on a super cute, like cutesy content. That's her whole aesthetic. Her banner is very cutesy and kid friendly. Her thumbnails are very cutesy and have all the same type of style. You can really tell that she really likes to play up the cutesy girly like you know, feminine theme on her channel, which is perfectly fine. If you want to do that, I often really love that type of, you know, theme myself, but would I commit to that type of theme personally? No, I personally wouldn't. I'm a little bit of a darker soul, um, but I think it's really cool that she can, you know, commit to that type of theme. Number seven, content obviously directed at kids. Now, if you guys don't know, recently YouTube has rolled out this new uh, thing with content creators. Basically, when content creators upload a video or create a channel, they need to classify whether or not the channel is directed at kids or if the videos are directed at kids, you can either do this by categorizing it by a whole channel, which means all of your content is this way and it automatically, you know, correct it this way, or you can correct categorize it per video and say, yes, this is intended for children. This is directed at children. That has been a recent thing that YouTube has done due to legal reasons. I'm not gonna bother you with like the logistics of everything, but that's basically what is going on within the YouTube sphere if any of you guys are interested in knowing about that. So what does this have to relate to Megan Place? Megan Place obviously makes a bunch of kid-friendly content and family-friendly content. And because it is Roblox, and Roblox is known to have a more child demographic, a very young demographic for themselves, I would say that her content is 100% directed towards kids. Now, obviously, no one is going to want to say that their content is directed towards kids because if you do that, then you lose a whole bunch of stuff starting in January where you will lose your community tab, you'll lose your notification bell, you will lose a bunch of these features that are essential for a YouTuber to be able to create content. You'll no longer get personalized ads, which is the ads that really bring in the money Like you'll still get ads, you still earn revenue, but they won't be you know personalized to that person and the personalized ads 
are the ads that bring in most of the money because it's something that someone is more likely to click on or watch the whole thing. Now, am I saying that I want Megan Plays to lose all of these features? No, of course I don't. She's an amazing content creator. I've been following her for so long and I really hope she, you know, continues with like whatever she's doing. I hope she's successful in whatever she's doing. But her content is undoubtedly meant for kids and directed at younger kids because of the game that she does play. Just within my opinion, if I were her, I would mark my content and my whole channel as for kids. But hopefully if she doesn't want to do that and lose all of those essential features, then maybe she will change up her content just a bit to appeal to a more PG-13 type of audience. So that way she won't have to mark her channel that way and she'll change it up a bit. But all of her past content, I would say, yes, it is directed at children. Now, you can make that argument for any, you know, Roblox YouTuber, and I guess it really just does depend on what games you are playing. Number eight, second channel. Now, when I say second channel, you might be thinking, hey, you know, this second channel, is that the Honey the Unicorn channel, or is that, you know, the channel that she has with her husband? And no, that is not the channel I'm talking about at all. None of those channels. I'm actually talking about her Sims 4 channel that she has had for the longest time where she meant to, you know, start uploading on it. It's called Megan Plays The Sims and it's 100% her. And she has uploaded two videos on it, um, a Rags to Riches challenge. I'm guessing when she created this channel, she was feeling in the moment, you know, inspired to create, you know, some sport content again. Maybe she'll start uploading on that channel when the new university pack comes out. But, you know, you never know. There's only two uploads on it from like five months ago. I really hope she starts uploading on that channel because I would love some more Sims 4 content from her once again. But if she does not like playing the game anymore, then she just doesn't enjoy the game. Number nine, Honey the Unicorn. Now, Honey the Unicorn is a character on Megan's main channel where Honey the Unicorn is a legendary holographic or glowing unicorn that is you know it's supposed to be a very hard pet in the adopt me game to get and that's what megan's channel is focused around is the adopt me game and the person who voices honey is actually her husband just with a higher pitched voice um they probably do that through editing um aviator games is her husband if you didn't know that now honey the unicorn has recently come out with another channel and this just goes towards a point that I made earlier about her being very creative and her, you know, doing lots of stuff with Roblox. You know, she has created this character, Honey the Unicorn. Her and her husband, I think, created Honey the Unicorn together. And now Honey the Unicorn is doing very well for a fictional character who's, you know, like, technically a YouTuber, but technically not a YouTuber because they're not real, but it's technically her husband who's doing everything i don't know it's it's weird but i like the concept and i think kids really do enjoy it number 10 the final thoughts i have on megan plays she has high potential within just youtube in general not just within the roblox community i'm thinking she has very high potential within the minecraft community if she would ever want to dip her toe in there or maybe want to go back to it she has very high potential in the sims 4 community i see her just being you know a great creator in the future and i think she has just high potential in whatever she does i think she would have high potential in beauty i think she would have a high potential in iro vlogging whatever she sets her mind to i believe that she can do so that is the last thing that i have to say about her i just think she has very high potential and i can't wait to see what she does in the future because i've been following for this long i'm not gonna stop now <laughs> But thank you guys so much for watching this video. That is going to be about it for me. And make sure to like this video and also comment down below your thoughts and opinions on making plays. I would love to hear your feedback. Also, make sure to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, comment down below that you have subscribed. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.